Hi everyone, this is Nia and today I'll be painting these trees. These trees are very simple and quick to paint, but this video will be a little bit longer than usual because there are going to be 9 of these and like usual, I'll be taking you through the drawing to painting these trees. I might also sound a bit different because I've upgraded to a mic instead of my inbuilt mic from my computer, so hopefully it doesn't sound too weird or different. But anyway, let's begin by drawing out some of these trees. To doodle these trees, you can look at different references to just give you some ideas and just take the overall shape of how the leaves are bunched together. You can create these using simple shapes like what I'm showing you here and by just slightly adjusting the way the leaves are bunched together you can create different types of trees. So you can draw a few of these and maybe take out some of the ones that I've painted and add your own type of tree if you would like to. You can experiment with simple shapes such as circles, triangles, squares, and things like that and just play around by extending it or making the trees thinner or wider and see what kind of trees you can come up with. You can also draw some branches and you can add curvy lines and things like that to give you different shapes. So just experiment or look for references and you should be able to come up with a whole bunch of these. Before we get to painting, I'm just going to show you the colors that I'll be using. So firstly, I have Viridian, then Prussian Blue, Sepia, Permanent Yellow Deep, Yellow Ochre, and Vermilion. And before I start to paint, I'm just going to spray them with water so it's easier to activate and pick up the color with my brush. I've also prepped the paper by creating a border around. This is just so I have space all around the page. This is an A4 page that I've also divided into nine sections for all of the trees. You can paint more or less, but I just like dividing it so I can even out the space and the size of the trees. For the first one, I'm just going to draw out a couple of round circles. This is going to be the first tree and later I'm also going to add some fruits on it. But I'm going to do that last, so I'm just going to paint the tree for now. Firstly, I'm going to begin with the colors Viridian, Permanent Yellow Deep, and a little bit of Sepia. And I'm just going to play around with the ratio when I paint later so I can create different types of green with the same mixture. And to paint the trees, I like to do this tapping motion to create different textures and I'm just varying the shape of my brush strokes so I can create random shapes. Notice that when I reload my brush with paint, sometimes I add a bit more permanent yellow deep or I add a bit more vermilion or a bit more sepia if I want to mute the colors and I'm also varying the size of my brush strokes while also leaving some white space. This is what I'm going to be doing for most of the trees. By leaving those white space, it's going to make your painting look more light and less bulky. And while the paint is still wet, I'm also going to mix a little bit of vermilion with sepia and using a very light consistency, I'm just going to tap it around those trees just to add a little bit of a different hue. Then using a thicker consistency of the same mixture, I use the tip of my brush to paint the thin branches. To get the thin branches, it's always a good idea to make sure that your brush is not overloaded with paint. So the tip of my brush can come to a very fine point and it's much easier to control the flow of the paint. And lastly, I just added some of the same green in a thicker consistency. And again, I'm just doing the tapping motion, but this time I'm leaving more white space so I can create something that looks like some leaves. You can also adjust the overall shape of the silhouette of the tree by just adding the same color on the sides to balance out the shape further if you need to. And I'm just going to leave it here for now and get back to it once I'm done with all of the trees and then add the fruits. For the next one, I'm going to create somewhat of a teardrop shape but with those rough edges around the sides for the leaves. 
And for this one, I'm also going to add little dots or dotted lines to create the extra texture. I really like the color combination for this one. So on my palette, I have a little bit of vermilion, but don't worry about it. Just use Prussian blue and a touch of sepia in a very, very thin consistency. The sepia should just mute the blue slightly. And I'm going to do the same thing with the tapping motion. But this time, I'm going to create that teardrop shape using the same brush technique as before. I want this tree to be fairly light in value, so sometimes I also like to clean my brush and use water to extend on the paints that I already have on my paper. And I'm going to also contrast this with a thicker consistency at the bottom while the paint is still wet. So even if the paint is much darker, it's still going to blend nicely with the rest of the tree. This step is optional, but I thought that it would be nice to add an addition of red to contrast with the blue. So I took a very thin consistency vermilion and added it to some of the light areas of the trees while the paint is still wet, so it's just going to be very subtle. And for the trunk and the branches, I'm going to use the same color as before with the sepia and vermilion, but this time I also added some Prussian blue, so the temperature of the brown is a bit cooler to match the blue of the leaves. To control the paint load on your brush, you can just dab the excess water or the excess paint off with tissue like what I did before. And you can see that when your brush comes to a very fine point because it looks fairly dry, that's when it's going to be very easy to paint those very thin lines. And then lastly, I just used the same blue mixture from before and added those tiny dots. And I'm also going to do the same thing underneath to give the impression that some of the leaves are falling off. Moving on to the third tree, I'm going to create something like a jelly bean shape in different sizes and I'm just going to pile them together in bunches and that's just the silhouette that I have in mind. So I'm going to still use the same technique by doing the tapping motion with my brush but this time I'm going to bunch it into those little jelly bean shapes so you can see the separate clusters of leaves and branches. For this one, I'm going to use Viridian as the main dominant color and then I added some sepia and also vermilion to the mix to mute the color down. And here I'm just going to do the tapping motion like before, but this time I'm doing it in the jelly bean clusters as you can see. It doesn't have to have neat sides, in fact I like the sides to be a bit messy just like the previous trees to give the texture of the leaves. I'm also going to add some permanent yellow deep in the mixture and alternate between the cooler green from before and also the warmer green with the permanent yellow deep added. And this I find will create a bit more interest to the painting. As for the trunk and the branch, I'm just going to use the same color but I just added a bit more sepia and paint it the same way as I did with the other trees. Lastly, I'm just going to add some darker colors by adding more sepia into the green mixture and just dotting some areas at the bottom of those clusters to give a little bit more depth. Moving on to the fourth tree, I want the leaves 
or the branches to be facing outwards for this one so the sides should be a little bit different this might be a bit confusing as you paint but there's going to be a method to creating this effect to make it much easier to paint For any of the trees, you can use any colors you want, but for this one, I'm going to be using a mixture of yellow ochre, viridian, and also a touch of vermilion to warm up the green a bit more. Unlike the other trees, I like to play around with the ratio a bit to create the different tones. To recreate the silhouette of the leaves facing outwards, I like to approach this by painting the separate branches facing outwards and each time as I get towards the sides, I like to slightly tweak the angle so it forms around where the trunk is going to be. I'm still using the same tapping motion to create the textures, but this time I'm also making sure that my brush strokes are following those angles and separating the sections so the edges are clear enough to differentiate this one with the other trees that we've painted, even though the overall silhouette or the overall shape doesn't look too different. For the trunk of this tree, I want the brown to have a warmer temperature to complement the green of the leaves. So I use the same mixture as the first tree, which is sepia and vermilion, but this time I used a little bit more vermilion to make it look more red. I like to add small branches where there's a large amount of white space between the leaves and I just feel like this gives a little bit more of a delicate feel to the trees. And then for the added texture, I used a mixture of vermilion and viridian together to create a slightly darker green and a slightly thicker consistency and I paint the dots or the dotted lines facing outwards following the angle of the branches. For the fifth one, I'm going to create a triangular tree that is fairly thin with a small cluster of leaves on the side branch. And because this is the tree right in the middle of the composition, I want to make it look different than the rest. So I clean my palette because I want to create a very yellow tree. So I use the permanent yellow deep with a little bit of vermilion to vary the color slightly. This one is very simple to paint. I'm still using the same method. I'm starting with the lightest first, which is just the permanent yellow deep in a slightly thin consistency. And I slowly add the slightly darker value by mixing a little bit of the vermilion into the permanent yellow deep to create sort of like an orange yellow. And as I add on the layers, I add a bit more vermilion to make the orange a bit darker. As for the trunk and the branch, since I still have a lot of the brown from before, I just added permanent yellow deep into the mixture so it harmonizes well with the yellow leaves. This one is quite straightforward, so to finish it off, I just added a thicker consistency of the same yellow mixture and do the tapping motion again and creating these 
different angled brush strokes. Moving on to the sixth one now, this one is very easy, I just used a circle as a silhouette for the overall tree, but for the sides I created more of a fluffy texture like a cloud, and for the texture I also added sort of like a spiral in the middle for the dashed line, so it's a little bit different than the other trees. Just like the shape, I'm going to keep the color mixture simple for this one. I'm going to be using a mixture of viridian and sepia together for the base color of the tree. In terms of the application, I'm going to make this one a little bit different compared to the other trees. So instead of the tapping motion, I'm creating more of a circular movement with my brush to create more of a soft edge around the sides. And I'm also going to do the same thing for the texture as well, which I'm placing here with more viridian compared to the sepia, just to bump up the saturation a little bit more. Again, like any of the other trees, you can play around with the ratio of the colors. So for the dashed line, I added a bit more sepia to create a darker value for a muted green color. For the branches, I just added more sepia to whatever I had left on my palette. And you don't really have to use the same mixtures, especially for the branches, because the dominant color is going to be the sepia anyway and as long as the value is quite dark you should be fine i personally just like to match it a little bit more with the color of the leaves but that's completely optional Finally, on to the last row. For this one, I'm going to create a triangular silhouette for the overall tree, and it's going to be very simple and easy to paint. For the color combination of this one, I'm going to mix Viridian, sepia, and also a little bit of yellow ochre, again alternating the ratio so I can create different tones of greens. So this is very easy. For this one, I am mixing the tapping as well as the circular motion like the previous tree to create a slightly different texture, but you can mix and match the techniques here that I've shown you to create your own trees. I'm also leaving this one fairly light in comparison to the other ones, just so it's a little bit different. But if you prefer to have darker values, you can also add on more layers to this. As for the extra texture or detail for this one, I just directed all of the brush strokes downwards. Finally moving on to the second last tree, this one is a little bit of an odd one. I created thin single trees and I placed them closely together so they look like one bunch. For the color, I'm going to keep this one simple again. I just used Prussian blue and yellow ochre together. I started with the rounded brush strokes for this one, but I changed to the tapping creating the single brush strokes. There are really no rules to this, you can just mix and match or just paint whatever you feel like painting or whatever you need to practice as these are just simple doodles. When I drew it out, I just painted five of these single trees, but you can also layer some of the placement like what I'm doing here. I'm using a thinner consistency to place ones at the front and the back just to make it look a bit more natural and less stiff.
Finally, moving on to the last one, I made the main silhouette a teardrop shape and I made one large one in the middle as the main branch and smaller ones around the sides varying them in size and also length to make sure that the composition looks nice and natural. For this last one, I just mixed a whole bunch of colors to see what different shade of green I can come up with. I ended up using Prussian Blue, Viridian, Yellow Ochre, and Vermilion together. And in terms of the application, I'm using the round motion to create the curvy silhouette around the sides. And I applied the same techniques as I did for all of the previous trees. I'm sure you guys know and are used to it by now. And I just feel like with these simple techniques and methods, you can create so many varieties of trees, even more than what I have shown you today. So I hope with this information, you're able to create your own customized varieties as well. Now that I finished painting all of the trees, I'm going to just erase my pencil marks that I've used as guides so I can have a clean page and I also almost forgot to paint the fruits so I'm going to do that after this. You can also add fruits to the other trees as well but I'm just going to paint some on the first one and for the last one I'm going to add orange blossoms as well just for added color. So this is the finished real version of the painting after I've placed the fruits and the flowers. And I hope you guys enjoyed this one. It was really fun to paint this and it is really easy to recreate because there are really no rules. You can create different shapes that you feel like and add different colors. You don't even have to use the same color palette as this. You can make purple or pink trees as well and I think they'll look really cute. So that's it for this video. Like usual, all of the list of tools as well as my social media links will be in the description box. If you're still here, thank you so much for watching till the end and I'll see you at the next one. Bye!